हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ए पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नसीर इकबाल फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कश्मीर श्रीनगर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन द मॉड्यूल एस्ट्रोसैट अंडर द पेपर एस्ट्रोनमी एंड एस्ट्रोफिजिक्स आफ्टर completing this module the students will be able to answer the following questions number 1 what is the importance of astrosat in the space mission if you compare the astrosat with other space telescopes why it makes but makes it so special what are the important parts of the astrosat and who were the contributory people who have started the mission of astrosat and few more did the launching of astrosat help the astronomers if yes how what do you think the problems that will get resolved with its working and what kind of science do you expect from astrosat and where is the main controlling agency who monitors its working its investigations it's not only day to day but from time to time month to month it's schedule india launched its first indigenous astronomy satellite named as astrosat in space just Two years before, on September twenty eighth, two thousand fifteen, entirely conceived, designed, and manufactured, was done in the country. It has, of course, some foreign collaboration, but a very small. It is supposed. to boost astronomies it is supposed to boost the astronomical studies in india like few other facilities for many years to come astronomical studies have several unique problems that no other branch of science faces it is limited by the earth's atmosphere which is selective in its transmission of all the wavelength of all the electromagnetic light we get from space for example we have the x rays we have the gamma rays we have the ultraviolet radiations coming from different celestial objects but because of the presence of our earth's atmosphere we are not able to have their detection on the earth's surface so that makes us to know that earth's atmosphere is a selective one for its transmission of all the electromagnetic light we can't go around various objects to see them from all angles also astronomical objects are large and and are spread over large distances and typically there are many similar but no identical objects one more problem is the problem or in of the manner in which 
information comes to us. Astronomical objects being large are never uniform. In any astronomical object beyond our solar system, there are regions that are extremely hot and can reach temperatures as high as hundreds of millions of degrees centigrade to regions that are so cold that they would barely register themselves for any thermometer with temperatures as low few kelvins or lower than even minus 270 degree centigrade. The result is that astronomical objects emit light of wavelengths ranging from radio waves all the way to gamma rays. Radio waves have very long wavelength and require gigantic antennas of several meters in diameter to collect them while gamma rays are so small that they have wavelength that they have wavelength smaller than the size of an atoms nucleus and small crystals of specialized material can be used to collect them. Over the last 50 odd years of space astronomy, the Americans, Russians and other space facing nations have launched many space telescopes, amongst whom American space agencies. The NASA's contribution has been the most outstanding. They have sent up very high resolution telescopes from time to time. These telescopes have worked in infrared, the optical, X-ray and gamma ray energies with unmatched capabilities in terms of ability to pick up the faintest light to precisely determining energies of each of these packets of light. With NASA's capabilities to launch instruments weighing several tons all the way to other outer reaches of space in various configurations and managing them with great skill and capabilities. Other nations hardly stand a chance of sending anything comparable in any wavelength region. It was against this challenge that India began dreaming of being a nation of capabilities in space astronomy. Mangalayan and Chandrayan were very difficult but obvious things to do and the Department of Space, Government of India's premier agency named as Indian Space Research Organization achieved it with great skill. AstroSat, however, stands out as unique in the world of nowadays now in space astronomy. Astronomical objects are complex and emit in all wave bands. However, all space missions so far have focused on taking a limited wavelength range and scanning the universe in that wavelength region to see all that is happening. However, the problem of astronomy remains that to understand a specific object, you need information in all the related wavelengths. Each wavelength region like a one blind man will tell you only about its own experience and you need to combine information from a large range of wavelengths to get a comprehensive picture of what is exactly happening. The close analogy for this is what happens at airports. Airport security likes to see us and then X-ray us to see if we are carrying anything dangerous. They also probably get a thermal means infrared image to see if we are 
carrying any hidden material. So, these three different wavelengths, infrared, optical, and X-rays, provide complete information of what kind of passengers we are. It is the best example, and the similar one case is with our astronomy. It is here that the far-sightedness of Professor Agarwal and other members of AstroSat team lies. They decided that <coughs> instead of sending up another small Hubble telescope kind of a thing, similar to NASA's, uh, something inferior to NASA's achievement, they would focus on getting information in as many different wavelength regions to get more complete information of individual objects rather than focusing on everything that is visible in a specific wavelength region. They have designated and launched a genuinely multi-wavelength satellite that can simultaneously observe any reasonably bright object in wavelengths ranging from optical to ultraviolet and X-rays, providing the most comprehensive impression of what the object looks like. It will help the scientists on Earth to work out how that is happening. AstroSat has been and hopefully will continue to fill an important niche in our studies of the universe. Most importantly, the idea of changing focus from wavelength to focus on studying individual astronomical objects will fundamentally change how future missions are designed all over the world. So when AstroSat was launched, it the country came on the forefront in the space mission and we have, we as the country India faced a challenge by launching our own multi-wavelength satellite, the AstroSat. So AstroSat is India's first multi-wavelength space observatory. The scientific goal is for a more detailed understanding of our universe. An important unique feature of AstroSat mission is the simultaneous multi-wavelength observations of various astronomical objects. AstroSat observes universe in the optical, ultraviolet, low and high energy X-ray regions of the electromagnetic spectrum, whereas most other scientific satellites are capable of observing narrow range of wavelength band. Multi-wavelength observations of AstroSat can be further extended with coordinated observations using other spacecraft and ground-based observations. Many major institutes of the country, like Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Bombay, Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics, Pune, Physical Research Laboratory, Ahmedabad, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Bangalore, Raman Research Laboratory, Bangalore, and many others, besides few universities in the country, are participating in the multi-wavelength observations which are presently being carried out from this AstroSat. AstroSat we has a lift of mass of about 1,513 kilograms was launched into a 650 kilometer orbit inclined at an angle of 60 degree to the equator of PSLV C30. After its injection, so after its launching into the orbit, 
the two solar panels of AstroSat were automatically deployed in quick succession. The spacecraft control center at missions at mission compl operations complex of Indian Research Observatory, Indian Space Research Organization, Telemetry Tracking and Command Network, which is abbreviated as ISTRAC at Bangalore, manages the satellite during its mission life. The science data gathered by Five play boards of AstroSat are telemetered to the ground station. The data is processed, archived, and distributed by Indian Space Science Data Center, Bangalore. Here we have a figure which shows the schematic diagram of the AstroSat. From the figure, we can just view it has three important parts which we name them as star sensors, the other part is phased array antenna and the third part is solar panels. Of course, this solar panel has them different distinguished things. Now when we talk about these playboards and with the use of these playboards, what are the main and the important objectives of this astrocyte, as mentioned earlier also, that there are about five payloads of an astrocyte, which are defined here as. The first one is, we call it as Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope, generally we refer it as UVIT. This is capable of observing the sky in the visible, near ultraviolet, and far ultraviolet regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. Then we have large area X-ray proportional counts, lack species. This has been designed for study the variations in the emissions of X-rays from sources like X-ray binaries, active galactic nuclei, AGNs, and other cosmic sources. Then one important part is the SXT, the soft X-ray telescope. This is also designed for studying how the X-ray spectrum of a range of 0.3 to 8 keV range coming from distant celestial bodies vary with time. Then one more part we have Caesar TI, that is cadmium zinc telluride imager. This is functioning in the X-ray region and has the capability to sense X-rays of high energy in 10 to 100 keV range. Then we have SSM, the Scanning Sky Monitor. This payload is used to scan the sky for long-term monitoring of bright X-ray sources in binary stars and also for the detection and the location of sources that become bright in X-rays for a short duration of time. So, with the launching of this AstroSat, we have to also come across about the basic important scientific objectives that have been already planned and that are presently under progress, rather that are presently being observed. So, what are those objectives? Number one is, to understand high energy processes in a binary star system, for example, between the black hole and the neutron star, to estimate the magnetic fields of neutron stars. Number third, to study the star birth regions and high energy processes in star systems beyond our galaxy, to detect some new bright X-ray sources in the sky. One more important is that to perform a limited deep field survey of the universe in the ultraviolet region. The major role of AstroSat, as already told that the AstroSat has very many, many scientific 
objectives which we have already discussed but there is some important role that astrocyte has to play it has been analyzed that from all the spectral bands the most intense and the rapid variations lie in the detection of x rays where time scale ranges from fraction of millisecond to seconds days and months these intense variations are due to binary star formation before 1996 most of the x ray satellites carried proportional counters with a typical area of about 1000 cm square with a limited time resolution capability when rxt was launched by nasa in december 1995 with a proportional counter array which we called as pca of five detectors of an area of about 6000 cm square had high counting rate and microsecond time resolution capability this scenario brought about a qualitative transformation in timing studies as it became now possible to study very rapid variations on sub millisecond scale the problem has now been resolved by the recently launched astrosat the laxp sip instrument on this satellite consists of three identical large x ray proportional counters so we call them as lapcs with an effective area of 600 cm square at 50 kv making it the largest area instrument on any mission in the range of 3 to 80 kv laxpc has about 10 microsecond time resolution capability with high detection efficiency up to 80 kv this instrument is capable for a fine time resolution and make a major contribution to rapid variability phenomena as already said that the astrosat which has been launched by the country's premier space agency indian space research organization is expected to reveal several important informations about certain objects where people have not reached to yet in the last 2 years the researchers across the country not only within the country but also from different countries as well they have been asked to write very short proposals for selecting different sources with different objectives and having its own science these proposals submitted by various researchers are being evaluated and the best ones are given a place and then there is basically a time schedule that is being used for its for using this observations and downloading it from the archive test the observation use the observation analyze the observations analyze the data and see the flourishing things in the given figure which talks about the astrosat while we have talked about the star sensors the phased array antennas 
and the solar panels. One of the objective that we already discussed lies in the X-rays. Why that is important in the sense that most of the sources, most of the stars, suppose one can be a black hole as we have already referred to and the another one can be a neutral star, they behave like X-ray binaries. Therefore, even in the phenomena of these X-ray binaries, a very important phenomena which is an accretion disk phenomena which tells more about the geometry of these objects, of these sources can nowadays be described by using the astrocyte data. And hopefully, in coming years, we will have many new things to do in context with the routine observations of this astrocyte. So, students, let us see what we are going to learn in this module. The expected signs of this astrocyte mission, various pay bounds of astrocyte, their role, their functioning, how is it going to resolve various scientific problems, what are the current problems in astronomy that will get answers due to its working and how is it different from other space probes? How long did it take for its final launching? Was there any difficulty during its completion? Do you have any idea? Did it have any foreign collaboration? Thank you.